everybody. Welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us, I get to review and show off the amazing 1989 Batmobile, the Ultimate Collector Series Batmobile. It's got, uh, it's got the sticker, the Ultimate Collector Series sticker. It's got the exclusive figs. It is a massive, massive, massive model. Uh, coming in at 60 centimeters long. It's really really big. So uh, before I jump into anything though I do want to say thank you so much to the Lego group for sending this set over to us to do a review This set was made to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the 1989 Batman movie and subsequent creation of this very classic and iconic Batmobile uh, it sells for 250 bucks 250 euro uh, I think 220 in pounds uh, so there you go. That's the price breakdown and it is uh, one massive very very nicely made model extremely heavy Super super strong and durable um, Yeah, I'll be getting into all of those details including showing off the box art and the manual and more But first I want to talk about the three minifigs. So here are the three characters We've got Vicky Vale on the left Batman in the center Joker on the right and they also came not with a display stand, or I mean it is, but it is in the shape of sort of a building ledge, a Gotham building ledge with gargoyles on either side. Similar to how the, uh, the gargoyle build looked from that Comic-Con exclusive set not too long ago. But let's jump in a little bit closer on Batman. So here we have the star of the show, the Michael Keaton Batman. Uh, and this is great, the mold that makes up the cowl slash cape it's one piece molded in rubber and you can actually see the texture changes between the cape and the cowl that's a really really wonderful effect and I just love the the flaring mold that actually makes up that cape in the back it's really really nice it's kind of rubbery it's bent oh took them off the stand but it's kind of rubbery and bendy it's not uh, like a solid uh, piece of plastic that is really stiff and because of that, you can see all these little white flecks. I had them in the bags, but they actually kind of stick. They stick to the rubber a little bit more easily because this is even squishy too, like the ears are squishy as well. So great looking guy. Um, I will say right now they, they included this because there's this kind of funny ongoing joke. I think it was also for the Clooney Batman suit as well, but for Michael Keaton and I think Clooney during the making of the movies, the cowl was just this solid mold and they couldn't turn their head at all in any way, shape or form. So uh, the, the mold that goes over the shoulders here, that you can see it belonging to the cowl is done the same way. So it really, really stands out compared to the rest of uh, the Batman minifigs. This is the print for his chest there. So, uh, pretty standard. I think the muscle detailing is actually slightly different because it is gonna match up with what he looked like from the movie. And what's kind of funny is the facial expression, totally not exclusive. It's not like a special print that is specific to just Michael Keaton. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of a standard Batman face that you see in a lot of other figs and that's because some of the earliest versions of the Lego Batman minifigure kind of looked like the Batman from the 1989 movie so it almost makes sense that the original Batman print kind of was a Michael Keaton face print uh, in the in the beginning to begin with I should say at least that's the way I'm kind of looking at it because they went pretty darn meta with uh, with this extra cowl piece and cape piece all right here he is the Jack Nicholson Joker uh, very very cool this is the first time we've gotten Jack Nicholson anything in minifigure form and this is a pretty darn iconic role great looking print for the front and uh, and there's a little bit of printing on the back, but of course, it's really all about that front detailing that we have here. And you can see his face, especially printed face, because uh, he does have that uh, those funny cheeks that are always curled up into a great big kind of cheesy looking smile. Um, I will say, I don't know how many I don't know how many exclusive molds they can like make for a set like this, but would have been great if they made the pistol mold just longer, like an extra like an extra stud longer because he did have that great big long barreled pistol in one of the final scenes but it would have been cool if they if they included a little easter egg like that pretty darn good looking fig him like the batman are going to be the more sought after ones but the inclusion of vicky vale uh, was a nice touch you know what they could have just done batman and the joker and everyone would have been like great we got batman and the joker but uh nice we got vicky vale she wasn't as 
big of a character. I mean, she was actually a pretty big character in the movie, but uh, maybe not as recognizable or familiar from people that are just kind of looking at this from the surface level. Great looking print though for her body. You can see her alternate expression is pretty darn good too. Um, yeah, not bad. Not bad. I like this. I have a feeling uh, this would be a pretty useful print for people to use in other characters as well, though this is gonna be an extremely rare print because I have a feeling, uh, just like the other figs, that she is going to remain exclusive just to this set. But now let's move on to the build. Alrighty, so here it is, the Batmobile in its full glory. Uh, there's a lot of things that I really, really like about this model, and I think I'm just gonna go through its general features, the things that it can do as a model, and then I'll go through some of the nicer points of detail that the designers uh, decided to include here. Uh, number one, incredibly dense, very, very heavy. Lots and lots and lots of really big uh, bricks were used in order to put this thing together. So yeah, there's a big thing, but let me show you the first feature. See how this can move a little bit, the thruster. Let's just, is it going the wrong way? Boom! Those little things popped off the top, and now we've got the two Browning machine guns. Those are the two machine guns that can pop up there. I'll show some nicer sort of beauty shots of that. So there's one function, and then the second function, reaching over my studio light to do this. There we go. Cockpit pops up ever so slightly, and it pushes forward to reveal a very well fleshed out interior. And in terms of functions, that's pretty much it, except, you see there's a steering wheel down there? You can't really see me do it, but uh, yeah. You can turn the wheels and it turns the steering wheel. So that's pretty nice. I mean, it is such a massive model that, uh, you know, yeah, I don't think it was too much skin off the designer's back to include something like that on the inner space, so that's pretty cool. And uh, right, let's actually show some of those details off a little closer. Alrighty, so here's the look at that pop-up function one more time in the film. Those uh, coverings, these coverings here, actually just uh, kind of popped off, yeah, and they shot off to the side. I know people that do custom builds of this model. There's actually a pretty common custom fit. People like to make their cars look like uh, the original 1989 Batmobile. These things are attached to the tops of the guns and they just fold in and out because of course you don't want to just kind of throw your plates along the side. But this is a pretty accurate movie detail and I'm glad that the designers put it in here. There's, there's a lot of uh, friction here, makes it really, really easy to twist up and down. Uh, in fact, the feel is, is like butter. It's actually really nice. It's super easy to twist up, goes all the way back down. There's a little sticker detailing on the side of the Browning machine gun there, and that's about it. But I gotta say, it's a pretty nice looking function, and uh, yeah, it works pretty darn well. Um, so Batman definitely killed people <laughs> in the original movies. Uh, I know he has like this whole like no killing or whatever thing, but that that didn't come uh, that wasn't always a rule. You don't install two giant machine guns on your Batmobile uh, if you have no intention of using lethal force whatsoever. Now the second function is kind of uh, simple. You just lift it up ever so slightly and then it just slides forward. That's it. Uh, during the making of the movie, they got the frame down correctly and then once they molded out, I think one of the first sort of larger scale kits of what the car was gonna look like. Only then did they actually uh, think about how they wanted the cockpit to open. And it's based on the uh, old Harrier design, like, an, like a Harrier jet. Uh, so it's that's kind of cool, it's based on a jet. You know, the back detailing also kind of looks like a jet as well. And uh, yeah, let's check out the interior though, because this one is pretty nice. Alrighty, so from this upper detailing, you can see the seats. I like the little indented head cushions there. That's an accurate detail. And then there are several stickers showing off about a million different little buttons uh, that I think, I believe, there's actually a lot of uh, images and recreations of this vehicle. I bet you that every single little button on the inside here probably matches up perfectly with what it looked like on the original interior. Now this angle maybe gets in a little bit closer, at least you can see it from the other side. Uh, yeah, you've got the two seats there and just buttons, buttons, buttons galore. Uh, all stickers, minus that little detail, that print, well, I can't zoom in too far, but that print that is on the front of the steering wheel there is an actual print. And that's the only one 
uh, Lista. That's the only one in here. There's one other in the set. And you know what, I feel like you guys really aren't getting quite a good enough close look here. So I'm just gonna hold the camera. There's the seats. And uh, this is the best, the best impression I can get. This is as close as I can get the camera to the inside uh, before the lens starts hitting the top of the roof. But yeah, there's a lot of wonderful slope pieces, different computer shapes sticking out. That's all accurate. Uh, those little pieces in there move. I mean, they don't obviously connect to anything, but uh, the steering wheel does move. And the one thing that is kind of difficult, you can maybe even see the wheel moving ever so slightly. Uh, you can't really, it's hard to get your fingers in there to actually move it around, just the way the cockpit is shaped. So, like, it's nice that the, that the steering wheel moves back and forth and that it moves the wheels, but it is like, you really have to get your whole hand in there in order to do it. So the function itself is not convenient to say the least. So anyways, this is a, this is a pretty convenient function though. That works pretty darn well. Doesn't lock in place, doesn't click or anything, but it matches up very, very flush. So that's always nice. And okay, that is that function. Alrighty, so let's start off with the front here. Probably the most difficult shape, one of the most single difficult series of shapes all kind of mishmash together for any Lego build because this whole thing is very smooth and it curves in and then there's, it's kind of rounded over but sort of a sharp intake and it comes back around and then the inside has just these wonderful odd and swervy kind of swirls that come up around to the initial cone. Uh, very admirable. I really like what the designers have done here. Um, there's certainly some areas that aren't like, let's say, perfectly accurate, and I think they may have sacrificed a detail or two um, just in order to get something to work. I think this proportionally, like maybe, uh, maybe it was bigger originally, and I know that there were a couple of little fins on the side uh, that I think, you know, were kind of small and not that well noticeable, so they were just excluded altogether. But uh, all in all, pretty darn good detailing. The one criticism in this area, if I had any, just because we look at like the crazy accuracy for proportions, especially where you see the light bouncing off, um, that, yeah, that angle just isn't like perfectly rounded over. Now, that's kind of nitpicky just because it is such an extremely uh, well-built and highly detailed model. But uh, just, just because my eyes catch the light like that, I can't help but have a little bit of my attention drawn there. But other than that, really, really, really solid, solid building. And now let's maybe zoom in a little bit on this edge here. And I think there's some slightly different details on either side, but really, really nice. So that's the grappling hook. That grappling hook can actually hook shoot out and like hook onto things so it can turn better. It's a really kind of goofy function, but you know, it's Batman, so what are you gonna do? Uh, really, really nice fin detailing here. This looks excellent. This is probably, I think my favorite bit of detailing because it's so hard to get that shape to look right because really the whole plexiglass or fiberglass body kind of very elegantly flows into that. So I think they did a really good job sort of capturing that idea here. There's a little bit of detailing on the side also that I feel like could have been, there could have been a little bit more detailing included. This is actually the second printed piece. Really, really subtle. Will it focus? Really, really subtle. Will it focus? There we go. That's a printed piece right there. Really, really subtle. It's supposed to attach onto, I think, a little bit of a longer metallic body just for some side detailing, uh, but it really is just like one uh, two by two tile there. So that's that for, for the other printed piece. And uh, yeah, really good looking shape though. This is not easy to have it look a little bit rounded and then kind of curving up and around. And uh, yes, also one thing I do wanna note, I really like that they included that the body kind of fanned out a little bit back there. Really, really subtle uh, and highly accurate detail to include. Now moving around towards the back, I actually forgot, I don't know why, uh, that's also printed. All four of the wheels have a printed uh, Batman, Batman symbol, Batman sign uh, on the side, so that's also a nice accurate print detail. And the back here, I think, is probably some of my favorite build detailing that I've seen. Uh, in a model from this year, just, oh, it, I just really like how everything kind of slowly, smoothly curves in, comes up and around. It just feels, 
it just feels right to me. Uh, the back detailing does. I don't know if you noticed right there, but this back detailing wasn't uh, sticking in properly. I, I blame that on my brother. He was looking at it uh, a little bit before I did this review, but excellent. I love this, this shaping that we have here. I don't want to twist it too much because it will just pop off the top pieces again. And then looking down, you have the four sets of exhaust, the rounded over uh, backlights, and then really, really, really nice. I love uh, that the designers managed to find just really nice arching pieces to smoothly make those bat wing shapes. I really like this detail, but you know, at the same time, if you were to look at like a highly, highly uh, detailed version of the model or pictures of the original, uh, this shape isn't doesn't look quite like that. It actually kind of juts back and forth. It's almost more spiky than this, but this has just a much more distinctive visually, uh, visually, known look of a bat wing. It looks, it just looks right to me, even though technically it's not like perfectly accurate. I don't know how to describe that. Uh, really, really nice details here. Oh man, I love how these connect in here. Actually, I really like how the inside detailing connects also as well. This is all upside down turned studs just kind of clipped in in a few places. You would never know it, but uh, yeah, just a wonderful way to flip the studs around. Uh, lovely way to fit in these, these sort of, uh, these vent pieces here in the back. So the back is probably my favorite part. I just think that they got all the shapes right. I think that it uh, just looks so distinctive and it just feels so smooth and it feels right. It just feels really good. So. There you have it, we've got the wheel wells, few little rivets that are kind of sticking out here and there. You've got the sort of the gas cap, I think that was taken from a London bus, I wanna say. I know, I, I, I watched a couple of videos about this, but I've also just watched videos on this several times in the past, having done other Batmobile videos and just kind of loving uh, the way this car looks. Uh, these stickers though, for these gas caps, um, gotta say, they're a little bit bright. They, they pop out a little bit too much on the model. Um, as a slight criticism, I feel like they could have been made in sort of like a metallic, kind of uh, maybe slightly reflective, darker gray. That would have been nice. Um, I don't know, that's, I guess that's a criticism, but very, very small at that one. This is also the detailing on the other side. Tons of those little ice skate pieces in the flat silver, which look really nice. And uh, right, so we've got the basics of the look down. You will notice that I have been spinning this around the entire time. That is part of the set. A uh, really nice touch on their part uh, because the Batmobile does actually spin around in the, uh, in the universe, in the movie. In fact, he spins around in like a lot of the movies and pretty much all of the cartoons and comics. So that's nice. Uh, the one thing though that you'll see is that this, not like a big fan here. Let me see if I can just slide the whole thing over. Yeah, you can do that. It doesn't stud in or anything. Uh, you can never fully see the card. See what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's a nice idea, but it, it, it just doesn't feel right to me in terms of like having a fully displayed thing because the card is never, you know, you're either blocking out a bit of the image or you're gonna be blocking out the symbol or one or the other, or you just won't be able to see it at all. Uh, I kind of prefer or would have preferred uh, this card being built onto a different piece altogether and it would be separated from the model. Um, but here, let me just show you guys what the stand looks like. It's a very, very basic build. Um, this is what it looks like. This is my guess. I'm guessing that people are going to use this and have it just separate. I don't know, just even displayed separately like that. I feel like you could even flip that around and uh, even maybe even using the exact same pieces and just kind of have it standing up a little bit higher. This is it here though. It doesn't stud in. The model can slide around ever so slightly, but I kind of prefer it that way. Uh, there's a, there's a color-coded bit of Technic on the bottom, but I've kind of memorized it at this point. So you can just, oop, I took off the, uh, I just took off the gun covers right there, but you can just pick up the model, really easy to pick up, very heavy, but very strong. And I just slide it over. I just slide it over. Oh, dang it, did it line up correctly? Here we go. I just slide it over and the whole thing just matches up like that. So 
Uh, I, I, I appreciate the convenience factor, and I almost just like the look of this thing rolling around on its own without any other uh, bat stuff hanging out underneath. So that's kind of a personal preference of mine. Uh, you guys can let me know what you think about that. All right, it looks like I've talked quite a bit about the model. Let me show you guys a few little things uh, outside of that. This is the manual, very big, very, very thick. Wonderful images, uh, high, very high quality. This is definitely one of those manuals that you'll probably want to be holding on to for quite a long time. It goes into, uh, you know, of course, the designers who worked on the model and a little bit into the backstory of the Batmobile itself, how it was produced in real life. Uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful stuff. I haven't gone into it a ton, even the designing of the minifigure. Um, and of course, yes, the manual itself. It's uh, also, I would like to say in this part, uh, the build experience it was really nice. 24 bags, uh, but there's no duplicate numbers. So you're only dealing with like, I don't know, a couple hundred pieces at a time. It made for the build experience to be incredibly smooth and easy going and you're not sifting through lots of parts. So I like that a lot. Let me show you guys the box. So here is the Batmobile box. Love that the uh, the print for the Batmobile is glossy, with the rest of the finish being done in sort of matte black. This is the uh, this is the look on the top, and that gloss goes for all the prints that you can see of the vehicle on any of the sides. So you've got a glossy edge here, and the back is also glossy with matte. So really nice. Just a very simple bat symbol from the original film. So it's just a fun look. And then here is nice. You got a nice little silhouette of Batman there. So pretty top notch looking box. Very quick before final thoughts, I just wanted to say uh, this UCS 1989 Batmobile and this Dave Slater UCS 1989 Batmobile that I think he made like a year and a half ago. Totally different models. Some people were asking and emailing and stuff. Uh, once the leaked pictures came out of this thing, uh, if there are any differences, similarities, totally different builds, hardly anything really is similar between one and the other. Obviously a few pieces here and there may have been used because they're just kind of the best pieces at a, at a certain larger scale. But this is 60 centimeters, 40 centimeters. I'm gonna be doing a completely different comparison video uh, that won't be this one at all, It'll be a separate one completely different, just comparing these two models and showing the differences and similarities between larger and smaller scales and advantages and disadvantages, things that you can focus on in one thing and, uh, and the other. But uh, anyways, I have a massive appreciation for both models and I highly recommend you check out the comparison video once it's made. It's probably gonna be linked in this video once it is made. Anyways, jumping into final thoughts. All right, so here it is, the final model all together. I gotta say, uh, this will leave some very good impressions on people. If you have this on display, it's gonna look amazing from afar, it's gonna look really good from up close. It will impress. The size is absolutely uh, a huge factor. I mean, it's just such a massive build and it's strong. Like, you really can pick up the model from from just about anywhere on the bottom. It's pretty much laced completely with Technic. So uh, I think Lego did an excellent job designing this. I think the designers uh, specifically for this set should be very proud of what they've put together. The minifigs are great. I really like that special mold for Batman. He's gonna stand uh, out against the rest of the others in the collection. I think even compared to all the crazy ones like from the Batman movie and stuff. Obviously there's some dings. It's not like a perfect model. Like. I'm not a big fan of that little extra hump that we have there in the front. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the way this thing sticks out on the bottom. I'm gonna definitely pull that off and have it modified sitting next to the model at the end. This could be a slightly darker sticker, not a big deal. And something I didn't mention uh, during the review, but there was no fire included for the jet engine, which I feel like is a total missed opportunity. You see fire coming out of the back of this thing in the movie movies. Uh, plenty of times. Like it really is something that you see all the time. It always looks a little different. Sometimes they couldn't get the fire started in the back. So they just kind of lit stuff on fire and threw it in there. Other times they could get the uh, the jet propulsion to, to kind of work. But anyways, uh, yeah, fire in the back would have been nice. But uh, these are all little things. For us, we do a lot of custom building. So um, yeah, you know, changing out the stand, adding fire, that's not really gonna be a big deal for us. But anyways, Overall, very happy with the way this thing turned out. Uh, the designer should be really happy with themselves. 
uh, for doing such a good job putting this massive thing together. I think the part to price ratio is not too bad. Uh, it certainly is a big heavy model. If you don't get this thing, I do recommend that if you ever see the box in a store, just pick it up and <laughs> just see how heavy it is for yourself. It's a big heavy model. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be it for this review. Comparison for Dave Slater's custom model will be in the works or linked in this video. Thank you so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.